most dominant features of uh, healthy soils um, that we've put more and more focus on and particularly in recent years with people like Jackie Stroud at Rothamsted giving us more and more information about earthworms um, and how they function and the types we should be looking for and how we should assess them. Yeah, they really are a key part of uh, healthy soil uh, function. Um, one of the issues with this soil when we started four years ago that was we had no worm population. Um, it was quite stark that they just were not here. And you cannot get really good soil function until you've got a worm population built uh, and helping you uh, with drainage, with nutrient recycling and things like um, uh, residue management from the surface uh, of, the, of the soil. And also understanding that depending on the species of worm that we're trying to uh, encourage, we need to understand where they want their food source placed. In the case of anisic worms, which is what we were really trying to build uh, in these soils to give us really good uh, drainage to depth and root penetration to depth, we needed to put their food uh, on the surface. That's where they like to feed. Um, so we just want to have a quick look now at, at what we can actually see um, has changed within the last four years and, and it takes a little bit of getting your eye in but once you've got your eye in you can start to see these little wigwams that get formed on the surface of the soil and around each of these uh, wigwams when you've got quite a thick layer of, of crop residue like we have in this situation so this is chopped spring barley straw but you can see this clear gap um, or area of bare ground surrounding this wig, this unnatural looking wigwam of, of straw. It's clearly been brought together and that's being brought together by an anisic worm. And we can count these middens within a square meter and having counted them in here, you know, we're now up to in four years, we've gone from nothing to about 15 anisic worms per square meter. That's a really useful population because they can now come together uh, and start to, to mate on a regular basis, lay lots of eggs, and the worm population really starts to expand very, very quickly. But when we're trying to build populations like this, we must remember that their food source must be placed on the, on the surface. They're a key part of managing our residue. So place the residue on the surface, as the population builds, they will clear that surface of residue, take it down, uh, into the soil and in taking that residue down into the soil they then share that food source with uh, endogeic worms which are living in the top 12 inches of soil or so moving backwards and forwards or side to side in a horizontal manner um, and they're the worms that really help aggregate our soil uh, and they're always popping in and out of the surface of the soil as well you get lots of little holes popping up in the surface um, and you'll see lots of worm casts on the surface as well. That's all driven by epigeic worms, which um, are far less cultivation sensitive because if we um, just cultivate the soil and move it around a little bit, we just move those worms around a little bit as well. If we actually plow, let's say we plow 12 inches, we take all the worms within that 12 inches and just turn them over. So a large proportion of them again survive they don't live in permanent burrows, so they just get on with the job. And we'll always find epigeic worms in most arable soils. Uh, however, these anisic worms, these are the big, deep working worms, they live in permanent burrows. So each one of these worm middens is indicative of an individual worm working in a burrow that can go two meters deep in the soil. Um, and we don't have to get a spade out at all to ascertain how many worms per square meter we've got. We can just count these middens and have a pretty good idea of how our, how our worm population uh, is developing. Uh, and that's happening really well here. We can see that because the way water is being managed through this soil as well is fundamentally changed in the last four years. From, from wet soil with um, ponding on the surface to after this year, um, We've got no water ponding any, on any of these fields uh, and good water penetration down through the soil profile as George showed you and mentioned in the, in the pit he was inspecting. So having dug this area out here with um, 
three worm middens on the, on the top of it, uh, we can start to see these permanent burrows with organic matter being drawn down, uh, down into them and see them extend right down through the soil. Uh, and that's giving us really good drainage uh, and root access to, to, uh, to depth. Good worm population starting to build in here. Uh, these are in fact our, I think our endogenic worms. Good population now growing in here. Some of these will be juvenile uh, anisic worms. We can tell whether they're juvenile because they won't have a collar on and they tend to have quite a flat spade uh, on the back of their tail. And you can start to see the different colours uh, that we get and that's typical of these endogeic worms is we get all sorts of colours. Yellow ones, grey ones, green ones. One of the other things that happens if it's an endogeic worm, when you put it on your, your hand they tend to curl up um, in um, a little ball. This one is a juvenile anisic worm. He's got a slightly flat tail. He just looks right. He's not curling up in a little ball on my hand. Uh, he's looking for his get out route and there's no collar. So that is definitely a juvenile worm, most likely an anisic. One of the main concerns I have from growers when adopting a surface tillage type approach is what am I going to do with my tram lines and harvest wheelings? And my simple answer to that would be looking at this field, what harvest tram lines and wheelings? This system builds much more resilience into the soil and as you can see in this field, which has been trafficked several times on what has been quite a tricky autumn, the compaction or the depth in the tram lines just simply isn't there. So I wouldn't be too worried about that with this system going forwards. Dick earlier mentioned about anisic worms and there just so happens to be an anisic worm in front of me here. And here we have a fully grown anisic worm as can be determined by the collar and is a clear sign of good soil health within this part of the field.